رادیو ایران 670 AM همگی به خیر شیوا نعیم هستم از مجتمع فرهنگی ارت از طرف خودم خانم ربکا آقا لرپور دایرکتور ارت و از طرف بورد آف دایرکتورز به همگی شما خوش آمد میگم افتخار داریم که همگی شما رو در این جمع داریم از همه مهمونان عزیز که تشریف آوردن ساپورت کردن کمال تشکر رو داریم از آقای علیرضا حکمت شوار، آقای ساسان کمالی، آقای حسین مجید، خانم زهره لالزاری، خانم سیما فاخری، آقای آیدین هجیر، خانم شیدا مینا، خانم شیدا شیرازی، دکتر علی اسدی و خانم ماریا پالانجیان کمال تشکر رو داریم. همونطور که اکثر شما اطلاع دارین در مجموعه فرهنگی ارتس ما برنامه های مختلفی برای همه اقشار جامعه برگزار میکنیم. سالن این مجموعه برای مراسم مختلف، گرده همایی های مختلف در اختیار جامعه است. از پنجا نفر تا 500 نفر آمادگی پذیرایی از برنامه های مختلف رو داریم. میتونین که تماس بگیرین با دفتر ارتس کمکتون کنیم که برنامهتون رو داشته باشیم. امروز مجتمع فرهنگی ارتس با همکاری رادیوی 670 AM KIRN و همینطور ایرانی ان هاتلاین سمینار رو گرد همایی مشترکی رو در جهت اطلاع رسانی به صاحبان مشاغل و کارشناسان جامعه ارائه میده. در این سمینار نکته ها و تکنیک های جدیدی برای بازاریابی و مارکتینگ و تبلیغات ارائه میشه. همینطور در مورد اینکه چطور از هوش مصنوعی Artificial Intelligence در جهت موفقیت و پیشرفت و ارتقای بیزینستون بتونین کمک بگیرین. امیدواریم از اطلاعات بسیار ارزنده یا ارزنده دو سخنران مهمانمون آقای دکتر علی اسدی، خانم ماریا پالانجیان در دنیای کسب و کار و دنیای رقابتی امروز بهره مند بشیم. از خانم شیدا شیرازی از طرف ایرانیان هاتلاین خواهش میکنم بایوگرافی سخنانان مهمان رو ارائه بدن مرسی ممنونم شکرشون Good evening ladies and gentlemen Welcome to our fifth popular business networking and workshop event and I would like to express my gratitude to Ares Cultural Center Radio KIRN and um, Iranian Hotline And thanks to all of you, we are delighted to have you, the opportunity to be educated by our esteemed speakers. Uh, allow me to introduce our exceptional speakers here. Uh, Mrs. Maria Palangian, founder and CEO of Globofly and Roma Leaf, is a serial entrepreneur with extensive ex expertise in smart CD takeover advertising and tech startups, bringing together a process that harnesses community-centered CD takeover marketing campaigns, utilizing advanced technology. She owns two companies, Globalfly, a smart CD advertising agency with Fortune 100 
Fortune 500 clients. Her second company is Romaleaf.com, an organic hemp CBD brand with a flagship store in Studio City. Uh, Dr. Ali Asadi, our second speaker, is an accomplished author, senior business consultant, and esteemed management professor with a passion for helping businesses achieve success in today's highly competitive business environment. He is recognized as a leading expert in the field. Dr. Asadi's wisdom on various business topics has garnered, has garnered international acclaim with professionals and success seekers from different countries benefiting from his insightful guidance. His expertise and experience have led him to write over 10 books that have been widely purchased and appreciated by business professionals worldwide. Dr. Asadi holds a Doctor of Business Administration from the University of Liverpool, a Master in Information Technology from Webster University in Louisville, Kentucky, a Master of Business Administration MBA from Carlton University in Ottawa, Canada, and a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering from Bahona University in Kermont. Thank you once again for your presence and participation. Let's make this seminar an impactful event. Thank you. Salam. That's all I know. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today, and I feel so honored to be here. Um, all right. Just begin. Sorry. Okay. So just to give you a little bit of a background, which they did already, I just want to give you a background of uh, what my agency does and and how we came out to start smart city takeovers, which now is something that not only tech industry uses, but also the government entities are using and small businesses are using it. It really started from New York Times when I was uh, spearheading the influencer marketing um, department. And clients like Cartier and Louis Vuitton would ask us, you know, how do we know if influencer marketing is working when we're doing a national campaign and spending half a million dollars? And it was hard to tell how it was working. And so I came up with the idea of city takeovers while I was working for New York Times. And I decided that if we do the campaign one city at a time, then we can look at the Google Analytics. We can look at the traffic increase and we can tell Cartier that, hey, you did an influencer campaign in Los Angeles and New York and your traffic increased by 15%. And if you increased your sales by 10%, then there goes your ROI. And so that's really how smart city takeovers were, were born, I would say, um, back in 2017. I'm excited to start today by covering a lot of different topics that entail, uh, that are included in smart city takeovers, because it's not really one thing that we are going to that we generally implemented several things. We'll talk about location-based marketing. Um, we'll talk about identifying your unique value proposition, which is extremely important as a serial entrepreneur. I learned that the hard way. Emotional storytelling, experiential marketing, which I have a perfect example to talk about from this Saturday, which we did an experiential event, and I can't wait to share that story with you video advertising, and how to leverage social media and influencer marketing, especially when it comes to content creation, personalized advertising, um, as well as uh, collaborate with other local businesses or organizations, you know, going back to some of the traditional ways that our grandparents and ancestors have done business, uh, voice-activated marketing, and um, interactive advertising. So I want to start off with smart city takeovers. And I know this writing is extremely tiny, and I'm happy to share with anybody that wants to see this presentation via email on their own, be able to read. Please reach out to me. I'm happy to share. But really high level, it's really a combination of so many platforms. It's a combination of social media, text marketing, email marketing, PR, content creation, influencer marketing, it's billboards, digital billboards, print advertising. And I know sometimes people say, well, billboards are expensive. I can't do billboards. I don't have $5,000 to advertise on billboards. 
Well, luckily, there's technology that you can do billboards for as low as $200 a month if you want. You just end up being featured twice a day instead of 24 hours. Excuse me. So to sum it up, a smart city takeover is, is a strategy that implements multi-channel type of advertising. And I'll dive into each one and tell you the main ones and how you could start implementing. But to, to really, one thing, the one takeaway that I hope all of you will walk away from today is going to be that the technology has given us the ability to do Things that two years ago only Fortune 500 companies could do or companies that got funded millions of dollars could do. But today I'm really excited to say that a small business can do it because I own a small business myself too and I'm, I've used a lot of these things for my own business. And today whatever I'll be sharing with you is based on my own experience for my small business as well. The number one thing and... I'm sure Dr. Asadi will cover this too a little bit maybe. Unique value proposition. Small businesses need to really understand why are they different? What makes you different, right? And once you solidify that, then you tell others why you're different. And before you start thinking about advertising, before you spend money anywhere, you have to know what your pitch is. What is your unique value proposition? Uh, some of the ways that we encourage small businesses to think about this is, let's say you have a product and you're thinking about the product and you're thinking about your ideal customer, you should think about how is that going to help your customer solve the problem, right? Are you going to um, help them save time? Are you going to help them save money? And, and then you basically build the unique value proposition based on that. Without the unique value proposition, I generally don't suggest you dive into spending money because if you don't have that, then you're, nobody's going to remember why you're different. And when 10 other brands are advertising, it's going to be really hard for you to be remembered. Now, emotional storytelling. I want to touch upon, upon this because this is one of the most recent trends that I'm seeing across the larger companies, the smaller companies, the small startups that are literally doing it in you know, their bedrooms, starting their business in their bedrooms, um, thought leadership. So you may have seen that a lot of influencers have started their own companies. And what's genius about them is that they started um, being thought leaders in something, whether it was how to do makeup or if it's um, cooking a special meal or making certain shakes, they became thought leaders in the field that they're passionate about. What I want you to start thinking about is reverse that. If you're a small business and let's say you have a dry cleaners, think about what are you doing at your dry cleaners that makes you do your job better, saves you time, um, makes your dry cleaning easier, and then create content and become a thought leader in that field, right? And then indirectly you start getting more business. And same thing can apply for dentist. If a dentist is doing something that is working and he can share that with other dentists, he becomes a thought leader, but then indirectly he will start building the following to build clients and customer base. And then another thing you could do as a thought leader is you can start pitching to media and say, hey, I'm an expert in shoemaking. If you ever have a story that you're covering about shoes, I would love to talk about that, you know, or I'm an expert in skin care and I can talk about that. So you end up getting press and media coverage indirectly. So thought leadership is a very inexpensive way for you to get out there, use social media, use free platforms to become the thought leader in your space, which then indirectly drive you sales. Um, sorry. Next, I want to talk about experiential marketing. So uh, I'm not going to mention the company name because I, you know, for an MBA, we have an MNDA contract signed, but it was um, a, a, a brand that came to me and said, I want to get into the Armenian community. And I said, okay, well, what's your target audience? And initially they said younger demographics. So I was like, younger God, that's going to be hard. Younger demographics doesn't watch Armenian TV. They don't watch Armenian radio. They don't listen to radio. How are we going to reach them? 
And so that's where experiential marketing came in, where we decided to have an event, which, which really the purpose of it was to bring panel speakers who were experts in different fields. Some were entrepreneurs, some were small business owners, some were doctors, some were government people. And then we invited influencers because we knew that the younger demographics would be attracted to come and meet the influencers at the event. And then we drove all these people to using the influencers, using a few somewhat celebrities, I would call in our community, in the Armenian community. And we had this event where we gave free food, had the speakers speak, and then invited media. And the event ended up being a 300 people event, which cost the brand almost nothing because all the sponsors came in and sponsored the food and everything else. But then they ended up getting about $60,000 worth of media coverage. Okay, so if you were today to go and say, I want to be on Fox News, how do I get on Fox News? You either have to hire a PR person to get on Fox News, or you have to have a impel- compelling story to get Fox to talk about you. But another thing is events. Don't underestimate events, because after the pandemic, a lot of people need this in-person interaction. We're all tired of being on Zoom and talking to one another via screens. We want to meet. We want to talk in person. So I would say even if it's a small event with 10 people and you're inviting 10 customers, have an event. Invite influencers. Invite different people, neighbors, other small businesses and say, hey, come, let me talk about what I do and let me share my story. So event experiential. Video advertising. I know all of you are aware of social media and how reels are doing so much better than everything else, right? Okay. But then you can take those reels and run it as OTT advertising. OTT is over-the-top TV advertising, which four or five years ago, it was so expensive that only companies that got funded millions of dollars could touch because it was very expensive. It was like TV advertising. Today, you can do OTT advertising for as low as $500 a month. There are platforms that will allow you to create a video, simple video that you can create with your phone and say, hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm the owner of this business. I bake amazing, good cookies, and I would love to you know, have you try it when you stop by my bakery. And then you just post that on OTT advertising, which will play on places like Hulu, uh, YouTube, and many other streaming devices. And you set the budget on your own. Now, again, I'm happy to share if you reach out to me what type of platforms you could use to be able to run ads like this. But I just want to let you know that a lot of these things that were so expensive for small businesses to even think about trying have become so inexpensive nowadays that almost anybody can do it. And it happens to be one of the best platforms to reach audience and acquire new customers. Social media and influencer marketing. Now, things have changed since 2016. Influencer marketing was booming in 2016, and then it started declining tremendously. It started declining because a lot of influencers started having a lot of fake followers. And when you're paying an influencer to promote your brand and they have fake followers, you don't end up getting any sales. So there's no purpose to partner with them, right? Now, micro-influencers are the best way. So you go after the influencers that have under 3,000, under 5,000 followers, and you say, hey, I want to work with you. I want to have you try my product, create content, and then promote my content. That's an area that is still working, and I would highly recommend all of you to think about as you're, you know, you want to get the word out about your product or service, give them a free product or give them a free service and let them talk about your product. Now, they might not always drive sales, but they will create good content for you, which is extremely hard as a small business owner to sometimes create content. 
Um, so that's basically influencer marketing. And then again, uh, you know, it kind of explains the type of influencers you can go after. There's trade influencers by trades, influencers by, you know, different interests and so on. Uh, that influencer marketing is pretty interesting and it's a whole different topic. I'm not going to dive too much into it, but definitely if you're thinking about sales, think about influencers, but the smaller influencers, not the large influencers. Voice activated marketing. Now this is, this may seem a little bit futuristic, but I'm sure a lot of you already might have Alexa um, at your house where you ask Alexa questions or you might ask, you know, Siri questions. Um, our phones are monitoring us, as you know. And you might have experienced where you're talking about something and then you get a, I remember when I was pregnant, I, obviously, my husband and I would talk about, you know, the baby that's coming and baby names and so on. And then I would go on Instagram and I would see baby products, ads of baby products on Instagram. And my husband would be like, why am I getting ads for baby products? I'm not even searching. And I would tell him that the phone is hearing you and therefore serving you ads based on your conversation. Now, as a small business owner, you need to think that and say, wait, if that's the case, how do I tap into that? And how do I start building my, pro my, my marketing efforts? My content is created in a way where the voice search can serve whoever's looking for whatever. I can be the top one on the list when they're searching or simply just promote it to them. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of, it's not the easiest way to do voice marketing, but it's not the hardest either. You can go on Amazon, you can do Google Assistant, you can do podcast streaming audio devices where you could start customizing and doing ads to cater to the people that are kind of open to receive advertising. Another thing that's somewhat um, cool, I think, is interactive advertising. Now, Interactive advertising, again, it's somewhat futuristic, but it's not that far away. And I'm going to let Dr. Asadi talk about this more because I know a, he's going to cover AI. But what I love about interactive advertising is how technology has simplified it so much that, in my opinion, in the next year or so, it will be so easy for all of us to use, for all of our for all of us to think about marketing, doing marketing in a way that's it's interactive. Even if it's online, it's still engaging with our potential customers. This is an example of an interactive ad. Obviously, this was done years ago by McDonald's, and this probably cost them a fortune to do. But nowadays, it's, uh, it's much, much more inexpensive. But it, interactive advertising can come in many different ways. It could come in ways that, you know, if you're on Instagram, for example, you're doing a Q&A, you're doing an Instagram Live, and you're asking your customers, hey, what do you like? Do you like, you know, my box in red or my box in white? And you let the customers engage with you and help you in your decision-making process. So that's a form of interactive sort of advertising in a sense. But um, like IKEA, for example, I don't know if um, any of you have the app. They, and obviously a lot of bigger brands have the budget to create their apps and make them interactive, but Eventually, I think the technology is already, not I think, I know the technology is already there where we can just download an app and pay $40 and have the ability to utilize it for our own businesses too, to be able to do what IKEA is doing, you know, where you just hold your phone and then the product just kind of shows up and, and they're able to say, okay, well, this would look good on my, in my living room or not. Um, personalized advertising. Um, Personalized advertising is something that we all should think about because I think the, the technology is almost forcing us all to understand that there's not one size fits all. That we have to forget because, because of the competition and the amount of brands that are out there, you know, the amount of small businesses that are out there competing for the attention of that same customer if you don't personalize what you're doing a little bit, it's hard to survive. So I would say personalize, understand who your target audience is, understand what their challenges are, and then whatever it is, 
pro whatever, however you're serving your client, try to personalize it a little bit so that they can feel special. Now, all, all in all, um, I just want to say that you know, small, being a small business owner is extremely hard, and there's obviously a lot of competition with companies like Amazon and the bigger Walmart, which I'm, I heard that is going to leave California already. And so the one thing I can encourage you is don't get scared of technology. Don't. Technology is here to make things easier for us, and if, if you can just maybe ask whoever that you know is tech savvy for some help and advice, you can, you can accomplish so much. And nowadays with everything that's going on, it's very inexpensive to do a lot of these things. Thank you so much. And I guess now we'll open it for Q&A. Radio Iran.